no mention of plot, no mention of narrative or story. It sucks because it has minorities in it. That's literally it. There's no... Anytime you hear the like, oh yeah, because they were pushing progressivism, to them, pushing progressivism is acknowledging the existence of minority groups. It's always been that case, you know? And that's why I've always said, ideologically, Ben isn't that different from the QAnon Nazi types. He's only really different in his aesthetics and his optics and the way he presents the information. What has Ben been up to lately? That's what I want to know. Go woke, don't get released? The simple fact of the, the matter is that Gavin Newsom is struggling, and so he has decided that he is going to choose culture war above everything else. Now, his state has become a place that people flee. I know, you know, notwithstanding the fact that Republicans instigate every culture war issue and never talk policy ever at any point. That's their entire. Okay. Because I flood it with my company. The taxes are too high. The homeless population is enormous. Quality of living has gone down. And so now he's just trying to posture in the hopes that eventually Democrats will allow him to run for president. So he put out a statement yesterday. And he told the difference between California and Florida. He, right, he's running ads in Florida trying to proclaim that California is the land of freedom. Uh, free for abortion is pretty much what he means by that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Oh, remember? yeah, do remember that literally every time uh, uh, people like Ben complain like, oh, this blue state's falling apart. If you take a look at basically any performance metrics, blue states do higher than red states on aggregate. Whether you want to look at like gun crime per capita, drug overdoses per capita, overall wealth, like um, like like a, a business viability. Overwhelmingly, if a state is blue, it's more likely to succeed than if a state is red. Yeah, education. A big part of that is because cities, uh, uh, cities are the pr like the primary driver of growth and efficiency in a state, and the more cities a state has, the more likely it is to be a blue state. California is the land of homelessness and abortion. So that's exciting stuff from California Governor Gavin Newsom. He put out a oh, statement yeah. yesterday telling Hollywood to come home. He's offering a massive new tax break for Hollywood, something like $1.6 billion in tax breaks. Wait, are you, wait, I thought the problem was the taxes were too high. Conservatives are hugely in favor of selective industrial tax breaks uh to incentivize business development is he is he going to complain about that that's like a pro conservative like that's they love doing that like uh undercutting their tax revenue for the sake of businesses for the companies to, to start producing in hollywood again and the fact that hollywood stopped producing in hollywood is a pretty good demonstration that hollywood is horribly run in terms of like the government governor oh and so it's so it's a, a damned if you do damned if you don't if you do lower taxes for business uh, to, to incentivize businesses to um, uh, 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 do their work in your state, uh, it means that it was horribly run and you're compensating for a deficiency. And if you don't, it means that your uh, tax and spend big government tendencies are uh, stripping your state of uh, business investment. There's no actual like there's no real position. There's no winning here. The real reason, by the way, why uh, more work is being done outside of Hollywood is because after COVID, a lot of stuff is just being done at home anyway. Uh, uh, you know, once everyone's already like working from home, justifying all the costs associated with doing work in Hollywood uh, aren't don't always shape up the same way. Uh, you can you can broaden that work a little bit more. Evan Newsom put out a put out a statement saying Hollywood, your values, your choice. California is the best place in America to create. If that were true, then people wouldn't be fleeing it. You know, hand over fist. For Wait, what is the relationship between these factors? He's talking about Hollywood here. Hollywood is literally the biggest producer of movies in the world. If he says California is the best place to create implied movies, w w there's no relationship between these factors. For 100 years, he says, we've been the home for storytelling and storytellers. Together, we built a creative community that includes unrivaled cast, crews, craftspeople, infrastructure, and technology, robust tax credits, and other incentives. The best culture. Um, together? You didn't do anything, dude. Like, nothing. Oh my god, Ben, holy shit. Wait, when a politician says, together we've done great things, they don't literally mean they've been there since a hundred years ago, single-handedly building up Hollywood from the- This is the- this is like the pettiest semantic bickering. Come on. Jesus Christ. Um, you say, together we fought the forest fires, but I can't help but notice that you never actually went there fighting the forest fire. Yeah, yeah, they're a politician. They're meant to represent the people. Jesus.
Most importantly, we share your values. So now it's time to choose. Over the past several years, the legislatures of states like Georgia and Oklahoma have waged cruel assault on essential rights. Now, in the wake of Supreme Court's abhorrent decision overturning Roe v. Wade, those same states are quickly moving to strip reproductive freedom. As you know, their attacks are not incurring in secret. The harm they inflict is not the result of mere carelessness. On the contrary, they're carrying out these attacks brazenly and with the intent to cause pain in the communities they target, many of whom are essential to the success of your industry. Again, the, the emotivism of the left here is so astonishing. The idea here is that if you oppose the right-wing agenda, it's because the right wants to hurt you and is cruel and vicious. Yes, that is, yes, that is completely correct. That is true. It's uh, facts over feelings right there. Dude, like a good part of Ben Shapiro's shtick is like being indignant at the idea that his obviously malicious beliefs are a product of malice, you know? It's 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 cry bullying, you know. They'll, he'll he'll be sitting there like, and personally, I am deeply offended by the fact that you would ever uh, attribute my uh, seven thousand collective beliefs that contribute to uh, humanity's decline uh, and specifically harm minority communities as a product of anything associated with malice. You know, it's, it's like okay, fine, you know, be mad about it. Not that they actually have arguments on abortion that disagree with your own. They're bad people. That's what. Oh, keep, oh, keep in mind, by the way, uh, uh, Ben Shapiro has always had a huge hate boner for Hollywood because he couldn't cut it as a script writer there. Uh, so he's got a, um, a particular beef. I also like, this is such a common cope argument as well. Gavin, cruel and vicious. Not that they actually have arguments on abortion that disagree with your own. They're bad people. That's Having arguments where one person has a different belief than you is not mutually exclusive to them being bad people, you know, in the colloquial sense. So for example, if two people are having a disagreement about whether or not it's moral to somebody and you disagree with them, they think it is good and you think it's not good, you would be fair in saying that the disagreement you have with them is over an issue uh, that their position would, uh, you know, make them a bad person over. Uh, that's a pretty reasonable statement there. There's not a mutually exclusive factor. That's what Gavin Newsom is saying right there. Today, more than ever, he says, you have a responsibility to take stock of your values and those of your employees when doing business in those states. He's trying to, he's trying to values shame Hollywood. Good luck with that. That has not worked well in the past. What? It's just a generic call to action. Ah, all this reminds me of the fucking um, Gamergate era skeptic, like pause to attack Anita Sarkeesian for every other word she says. Also, what on earth is Chad up to? You guys are so slow. Is Ben is Ben Shapiro not cutting it anymore? We need the Jordan Peterson reacts. Wow, need more frogs. But I'm bored as f tbh. Well, that's how I feel, right? It's it, Ben is kind of tiresome, isn't he? It it really it it feels like Ben Shapiro has gotten a lot less interesting now that the Republican Party's agenda is so overtly like we will kill you. We want you, we want a white ethno state and we want an autocracy and you're going to die. Like now that that's kind of like the open position of the GOP effectively, people like Ben Shapiro are just kind of like the hangers on. Eventually he's either going to get shit canned uh, or he's going to have to move his positions over. I do think that Ben Shapiro actually believes in like the kind of conservatism that he does, which is this like pseudo neocon, like fake, like f fake civility, uh, which which makes me wonder if he's going to move on over as the times demand eventually, or if he's going to stay here as like the the rear guard for the propaganda machine to try to bring over people who aren't going to be pulled over by the basic QAnon domestic terrorist signaling. I don't really know. It's 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 hard to say. Yeah, but it does feel tired. I actually I feel like um, Jordan Peterson is is more representative now that he's kind of dropped the. Uh, the kindly old grandpa thing, and now he just sounds like a like a fucking Nazi like radio inquisitor screeching like spittle mouthed into the um into the machine to talk about how your 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 Jewish neighbors are hoarding gasoline and that's why your your cars are so expensive to drive or something. Well, that's it. This is this is kind of like a meta narrative now. You know, I want to watch a bit more of this. Where are we going, Ben? Maybe we could watch this then contrast. California is a freedom state says Gavin Newsom, who forced production to shut down in the state of California for a year. Freedom to tell your stories. Freedom to access the health. Or COVID protections, yes. Health services you need, including abortion. Freedom to love who you love and to ensure your LGBTQ plus minus divided by sign friends, family and colleagues can proudly be who they are. Freedom from repressive state governments that want to tell you what to believe and threaten you with felonies if you don't toe their line. Um, does the man own a mirror? 
yeah, wow, this is just so dry. This is just so, like, this, this, this contains, this is all the witticism of, like, reading off of a, 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 a like, Sunday newspaper strip where he'll read, like, he'll be reading Dennis the Menace, and then he'll read, like, the first three of four panels, and then he'll look up at you and then read the fourth one while staring directly at you. It does sound like he's exhausted, yeah. But to be fair, like, like, his grift is kind of dying, you know? I mean, pretty soon, almost all elements of conservative propagandizing in this country um, are going to have to be, like, borderline QAnon, insane fascist, like, uh, you know, anti-democratic, uh, COVID denialism, like, the whole, like, everything, you know? Where does he go after that happens? What happens there? His channel's still doing really well. It's it's not like his channel's dying. It just feels like he's um, it just feels like he's he's kind of representing, in in, an archaic, of propaganda production. Oppressive state governments that tell you what to believe. I mean, California is putting laws on the books that force your kindergartner to learn about gender theory. So I'm pretty sure that he is talking about California. Then he says, to those in power to make decisions about where to film, where to hire, where to open new offices, we in California say, walk the walk. Choose freedom. Choose creativity. Choose California. So ironically, Gavin Newsom is now running against Hollywood. So the accusation was that Ron DeSantis was running against Disney when Disney decided to butt its nose into gender theory being taught to kindergartners. There are so many euphemisms here. It's all so tedious. I can, yeah, we can tear into it. So, um... People criticized Disney for continuing to fund Republican politicians in Florida who were supporting the um, Don't Say Gay bill. The Don't Say Gay bill is essentially just an elimination of the ability to acknowledge the existence of gay or trans people in schooling. Uh, it's, it's essentially genocidal legislation. You excise them from, from the textbooks. You, you engage in a kind of institutional book burning. Uh, so they're delegitimized and um, re-stigmatized. Uh, which makes it easier to enact further persecution against them. Ben here is claiming that this is somehow comparable to the California governor, Ga uh, Newsom, uh, uh, saying that Hollywood should be progressive? I, I, I genuinely, I have no idea what point is trying to be made here. It is boring. No, I agree. It is boring. Yeah. And Ron DeSantis is like, well, if you're going to do that, then, you know, there are a bunch of special tax breaks that you guys get. You don't really need to be involved in this issue. That's just the way it works. Well, now Gavin Newsom is like, I'm going to cudgel you into bringing your business home, or I will attack you as insufficiently woke. Offering tax breaks as a cudgel? What possible interpretation of the world leads to that? It's the opposite of a cudgel. A cudgel is when you punish somebody. It's, you're, you're hitting them. That's, that's what cudgels do. This is leaving out like a bowl of cookies. It, okay. Now, here's the problem. Now, Hollywood gets to play a game here that um, that they care more about their woke morality than they do about money? No. no. They're, they're businesses. They care most about money. That's what their staff meetings are on. It's their profits. That's what they care about. But it turns out that that only applies when the economy is going gangbusters. When they start to experience business difficulties, they too are subject to the dictates of the market. It turns out half the American population does not agree with the wokeness of Hollywood. Which is one reason, you would imagine, why Batgirl has now been scrapped. So Warner Brothers spent $90 million. None of the video that we've watched thus far makes any sense at all. It's Gavin Newsom doing a very standard, like, let's all work together to make Amer America, like Hollywood, California good, smile speech, alongside some tax breaks, which is a predominantly conservative policy. Did I just say Gaben Newsom? What am I? I don't know what I'm saying, man. This video is putting me to sleep. Just to make a movie of Batgirl. Batgirl in the comic books is Barbara Gordon, the daughter of Commissioner Gordon. She's paralyzed in the comics at, at a certain point, and then she's unparalyzed. In any case, she's... Okay, so just to clarify, comics have different writers and multiple continuities. There are varying... Okay, I just... I, 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 just, I, I have a feeling this is going to be a race thing. We'll see. I mean, we'll see is Batgirl, and um, the movie was supposed to be sort of a woke bonanza, according to pretty much everybody who had seen it. The movie was apparently so bad that they just killed it. They were like, we're not even going to distribute it. We'll take the tax write-off. You know how bad a movie has to be 
to spend $90 million on it, and then you don't even release it? Well, depending on the tax write-off you might get, that might actually be worth more. I, so, I haven't heard anything about the quality of the movie being impugned. Batgirl, bad movie? I haven't heard anything. Because, like, studios put out terrible movies all the time, which makes me think that it's not a quality thing, necessarily. They put out the goddamn... The, they put out the goddamn Catwoman movie. <laughs> they put out, yeah, they put out the old Daredevil movie. I don't know. They put out a lot of stuff. Mor they morbed. They morbed hard, you know? Uh, so I don't know if it's just a quality thing. It might have been. I mean, I'm assuming the movie wasn't that great, and then there were other factors that went into it. Yeah, I don't really know. I do have to say, though, I think it's really funny, because, like, the go woke, go broke thing. Hold on. Top movies of all time. The go woke, go broke thing is such a, like, fake... Like, they'll apply it when it's true and ignore it when it's not. You know? Like, look at the highest grossing movies ever. Avatar, the James Cameron movie, which is about indigenous aliens getting destroyed by an American PMC. Like, like very obvious anti-imperialist overtones. Avengers Endgame, which was produced by Disney. The, you know, the woke company that's gone to war with Ron DeSantis. Titanic. I've never seen Titanic, but I think there are elements of classism in it. I don't know. The Force Awakens, Episode 7. The Wo- Oh my god, they made Luke Skywalker a girl, and there's a black guy. Uh, people hate it. Avengers Infinity War, also Disney. They're both Disney. Spider-Man, No Way Home, that's Disney. It's too woke. Jurassic World, never saw it. Oh. Then we have The Lion King, the live-action adaptation, which is the eighth highest grossing movie of all time. <sighs> Which is a Disney movie, uh, though I don't know if there's anything woke about it. Avengers, uh, Furious Seven, Frozen the Second, which is about, I don't know, what did Peter Molyneux, Steve Molyneux have to say about it? Sisters, woke, gay agenda, Top Gun Maverick. Oh, that did really well. Not as well as Avengers Age of Ultron, which sucks. <laughs> Black Panther. Dude! All, more, like, more than half of these movies are Disney. Like, the go woke, go broke thing is just, like, massive gigacope. Hyper gigacope. It's, like, people, people go for movies. Whatever. How many of these are Disney movies, man? Wasn't Frozen all white Scandinavians? Yeah, but to compensate for it, they, it was, like, gay or something. I don't know. Yeah, it works, it works backward from conclusions. It's, it's the, it's a very standard cognitive bias. Okay. That has to be a pretty damned terrible movie. Tom Leonard writing for the Daily Mail. He says, Batgirl, an apparently woke big budget film featuring a female version of the Cape Crusader, has been ignominiously scrapped, shocking the- Female version of the Cape Crusader? Batgirl has been a character for over half a century. What? She's not a- That's not a female version. It's just- They're just partners in crime fighting. They just have the same mantle. It'd be like having two people part of a super team, a super team, and you're like this. Okay. In the film world, condemned as irredeemable by studio executives at Warner Brothers, it seems that not even a lengthy spell in the editing room could rescue it. Nor was it good enough to send straight to video, as used to be said of films too bad for the cinema. It may be the most expensive film ever made that will never see the light of day. The film had got as far as test screenings. I love how Vosh is doing the same thing Ben Shapiro was doing just a minute ago. Top Liz, what am I doing that he was doing? It was being slated for release in cinemas and on the U.S. streaming service HBO Max by the end of the year, but audience feedback was so awful that Warner Brothers has decided the reputational... You're nitpicking little things? I'm fine with nitpicking as long as I feel like there's some kind of legitimate analytical thread beneath it, you know? The, the nitpicking I called out him for, it, I didn't call it nitpicking, I called it like semantic nothing. Like saying, we, we built Hollywood, you know? Oh, well, you didn't personally build it. Like, obviously no one thinks when somebody says we did something when doing a politician speech that they literally mean that they participated in it. You know, they mean like we, like collectively Californians. So that was like obscuring or obfuscating the actual meaning of the statement with a deliberate misinterpretation for political points. Whereas what I was doing there was calling out like weird phrasing, which to be fair, it is kind of weird. I don't know if I've ever heard Batgirl called a female version of Batman, but you know, whatever. I mean, it's not like a huge point damage of releasing such a dud would be even worse than wasting the tens of millions of bucks it has already spent on it. It just didn't work, said an insider. 
Given the low standard of so much of the content on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other streaming services, this represents a jaw-dropping failure. Some have alleged the film may have been scrapped rather than released for tax purposes. Warner Brothers can now claim Batgirl as a tax write-off, helping it recoup some of its costs elsewhere. But that doesn't really account for why the film was so bad in the first place. There are certainly strong clues to suggest Batgirl was only the latest in a long and disastrous line of Hollywood films that have prioritized politically correct values over entertainment. So again, this is a, like I've been I've talked about this this narrative so many times, but I have to reiterate it. It is a non falsifiable narrative for which there is zero evidence. If there is a movie and it is progressive and it does poorly, it did poorly because it was progressive. And if there is a movie that did well and was progressive, it did so in spite of being progressive. If a movie did good and wasn't progressive, that means that it did good because it wasn't progressive. And if a movie did poorly and wasn't progressive, then they don't just they don't even talk about it. You know, Hollywood produces a ton of movies every year. Uh, if you want to look for any specific narrative by focusing on one, two, three, even 20 a year, uh, you can. You can produce any narrative that you want, uh, literally any narrative. There are so many movies out there with so many different uh, uh, levels of quality, the reception, the budget, the everything. Uh, but this, it's, it's just such a tired and such a fake thing. Like, they're literally talking about how Disney is like the woke architect of child grooming corruption. When Disney produced half the movies in the top 10 grossing films of all time, and then they'll say, like, going woke equals going broke. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. We don't even know if Batwoman was that progressive. I have no idea. I don't know. Nobody knows. Well, I'm sure some people know. I certainly don't know. Ben doesn't know. The star of the film was a little-known Afro-Latina singer-actress named Leslie Grace. That was a risk because she never really made a big movie outside of In the Heights, which was a massive commercial flop. Apparently, Michael Keaton was going to reprise his role as Batman. J.K. Simmons was going to be Batgirl's father, Commissioner Gordon. That's a Wait, Michael Keaton was going to come back as Batman? Whoa, 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 wee woo. Well, I want to see. Okay, damn, man. Can you imagine being Michael Keaton and getting to play Batman again and then Warner Brothers doesn't release the movie? I'd be pissed. I'd, I'd, be, I'd feel like I'm reprising like the big role, you know, and then Keaton 70. Yeah, I know, he's, he's old. Release the Keaton cut. Pretty good cast. The film was directed by Adil El Arbi and Bilal Falah, a young Moroccan, young Moroccan Belgians best known for the TV series Miss Marvel, another sort of woke comic book. It is really remarkable how low IQ conservative media analysis is. It's genuinely impressive. This is all they know. It's the only like standard for analysis they're capable of. Do you remember when this guy tried to review the Batman and all he had to say was like the race and gender politics? Like, well, then that's, that's not all he had to say. He did talk about some other stuff, but like, that's what he actually added to it. It's like, well, there were like, there, there was, it was like anti-white and like rich people were shamed. Like that's like, it's, it's such a limited framework. Is this really Michael Keaton at 70? This? No, is this an older shot? No, so that's that's older. Then where's the newer one? It said shares photo of what's probably definitely Michael Keaton's planned Batman return. It's this one? But you can barely see. Okay, well he still looks really good here. I mean from the side, you know. Too woke to be released, Sag, true. He'll be in the flash too. Yeah. Is this Commissioner Gordon? Yeah, dude. Give him a big old afro. No nips? There might be nips. Woke hair. Release the nip cut. I, I know that that was a joke, but you guys do realize that Ben Shapiro and a lot of other conservatives would literally say, like, woke hair, right? Like, that's not... Like, we know that when they say woke, in reference to a person of color, any, they mean, like, non-white. Like, all, like so consistently. It's pretty difficult to parry their uh, parody their behavior. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Holy shit, I'm so tired. Batgirl's screenplay was by Chris... This is Michael Keaton at 70? Looking good, dude. Tina Dodds Hodson, a British writer of ultra-feminist film Birds of Prey. Also, Batgirl featured a trans character, Barbara Gordon's flatmate, played by the trans actor Ivory Aquino. Okay. So apparently the, the film just sucked. And See, right there. No mention of plot, no mention of narrative or story. It sucks because it has minorities in it. That's literally it. There's no, anytime you hear the like, oh yeah, because they were pushing progressivism. To them, pushing progressivism 
is acknowledging the existence of minority groups. It's always been that case, you know? And that's why I've always said, ideologically, Ben isn't that different from the QAnon Nazi types. He's only really different in his aesthetics and his optics and the way he presents the information. But the message here is that media which contains minorities beyond an acceptable degree, you know, you can have like a black guy, as long as he's not, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a role where you don't want him, uh, I mean, that itself is like a moral wrong for which the, the media um, deserves to fail. And this isn't new. It, this has been the case for like a decade. For as long as people have been saying, go woke, go broke, people have been calling media woke for having non-white, non-male characters in it. And, uh, and so they shelved it instead. So this is why the attempt to sort of shame everybody into coming back to Hollywood based on the morality. I don't think he was shaming at all, even remotely. I, don't, I think the governor literally just said, hey, here, have a tax break. Let's all do progressive value stuff because California is all about that. I don't really think that's shaming, but okay. Of their ridiculous left-wing woke precept, uh, it's, going to, it's going to not happen because eventually the market speaks. And, and Gavin Newsom, again, dri driving production back to California by telling people that if you love abortion, you have to do your production in California. That's not going to work. It turns out... No, that's not what he said. He offered them a tax break. Ben, Ben, did you read the, the, the article? He offered them a tax break. That's what he said. That's a market incentive right there. That the Warner Brothers would rather produce someplace where they don't have to pay exorbitant tax rates and deal. They got a tax break, Ben. That's what he did. He gave them the tax break. That was the incentive. That was the thing that, the, that he did. With, with the unions in quite the same way. I hope you... Bosh, this is boring. I know. All right. Well, I can cite. I can cite this anytime in the future. You know, people are like, you should see what Ben Shapiro's up to. Now, the the times have changed. The world is ending. The dialectic has advanced.